Welcome to the Full Deck Gaming Review of Senpai or Semp AI. Not sure, let me know in the comments how you pronounce it. I could say a lot of stuff before I actually start my review, but uh, fuck that. Let's not waste any time on this video, let's get right into it right after you like, comment, subscribe, share, all of that good stuff. The only disclaimer that I have for you is that I reached out to Senpai and asked them if they wanted me to say anything or how they wanted me to go about this review. A courtesy I should have offered to Mobilitics before I compared their app to Mare Sue from Star Wars. But I can't change the past. What I can do is full on admit that Senpai did not reply which means that I don't have to pull any punches, and I can be as cynical as I want in this review. The first thing worth mentioning I need to say is that Senpai will not get me banned or you banned while using it, so the blatantly obvious answer to your question is that Senpai is allowed by Riot Games. In addition, Senpai mentions that on their website, and on the Full Deck Gaming channel there's an entire video dedicated to that subject on third-party apps. Interesting thing about the downloaded app on my computer. It has a download the app button despite being inside the app. Not really sure what's going on there. Another thing worth mentioning is that Senpai does not use Overwolf as far as I can tell, unlike the Poor Professor and Facecheck counterparts. While I was searching for that answer, someone on Reddit said that Overwolf was basically malware, which I thought was kind of funny. If you do use Overwolf, I think you are actually fine and don't have anything to worry about except it's slowing down your computer, poor gas mileage, and some broken kneecaps. Speaking of breaking things, I'll be breaking the review down into a couple different aspects of the app and then giving my personal opinion on the app as a whole. I will be comparing Senpai to the other third-party apps in another video because this video is going to be a lot longer than I actually expected it to be. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss that video when it finally comes out. Stick around and I will be able to tell you exactly what sets Senpai apart from other third-party apps. Even though they are very similar, Senpai has one thing that the other apps do not really have. The first category of this review is the pregame. Senpai can auto-import your pro builds, which is pretty cool seeing that they're suggested builds for your champion. However, this is a generic build and it is not specifically tailored to your lane matchup. Senpai also auto-imports your runes based off of the win rate. Now correct me if I'm wrong here, but who in their right mind is using slightly magic boots on Misfortune? I was going to have a Misfortune background instead of Nasus until I got absolutely demolished in the bot lane like five games in a row. Not sure what determines a win rate based off the runes, because some dude can get one win with the wrong runes, because we all bring in the wrong runes sometimes. It's a 100% win rate, though. Just saying, I don't entirely trust the runes. You can let me know in the comments what you think of Senpai's rune choices. Senpai will also automatically import your summoner spells, even if you put the setting on off because you want to teleport on Nasus, peep the second game. Kinda got screwed over, but I kinda made the best of it. In my personal opinion, you don't need Ghost when your W slows people. I do like that it at least had a default flash location, that way it won't change up your muscle memory and hit D or F in the wrong time, and accidentally burn your flash. As far as pregame goes, it is literally the exact same shit as Poor Professor Mobilitics and Blitz. I know I said I would compare on another video, but here's the thing. You can hear me babble on about summoner spells, builds, skill orders, scouting reports, etc. Or, you can hear me say this one paragraph and not waste everyone else's time. You're welcome. Senpai stands apart when it displays the combos you want to use, it also lets you know that you will burn your mana using the WE combo with Nasus, which by the way is kind of a bad move if you want to stack your Q. I do like this combo information, do not get me wrong. Would love to see Garen's though, press E, press E, press E again, press E again, repeat until victory, you're done, that's it, that's the only combo you need with Garen. Let's talk about the during game because it's just much more interesting than the standard pregame information that all of these apps have. Senpai recommended I stack Misfortune W first. Can someone please explain to me that stroke of genius? Am I just inept at playing ADC or is Senpai on some really powerful hallucinogens? Good news, we aren't watching a Misfortune gameplay because they got smoked. We are focusing on Nasus and Senpai did recommend I stack my Q first. Good job, Senpai. The next thing we got going for Senpai is its overlays. The overlay is a CS tracker that appears in the top left of the screen to remind you that you absolutely suck at killing minions. Here's the thing about this overlay. When you click on someone in order to see the stuff in the top left of the screen and hit tab, it's an overlay, which means it will cover up the legend information at the top left for a few seconds that will absolutely feel like an eternity. As I stated before, Senpai brings in your build suggestions if you're into that. It has the standard builds, the winning builds, the pro builds. If you like that kind of thing, you are absolutely set with Senpai. Let's move on to the post game. The post game report has a banner across the top of the app listing the most CS damage, MVP, most gold, and highest KDA. 
Below, we have the strengths and weaknesses on the right, depicting how well you did and how poorly you CS'd. Pretty standard stuff, but damn, this app has a hard-on for me playing Nasus. Or I was against a zero-kill Yasuo top lane. Can't really tell. On the left side, we have performance charts comparing you versus anyone on their team in the following categories. XP at 12 minutes, gold at 12 minutes, damage per minute, vision score, CS per minute. You cannot compare to your own team, unfortunately. I just scrolled past the match summary, because who really cares? And after you go through the painstakingly long task of scrolling past all the stuff that I just mentioned, you reach the game overview. Now, I don't want to nitpick, because all the same information is there, but stacking teams instead of side by side is not the move. Blue team above red team instead of next to each other for comparison sucks. You will get lost trying to find each thing. The information's there, but it's displayed poorly. That's just a personal preference. If you like that, then good on you, good fella. Moving on to the profile page, although it is not called GPI, that is what Senpai has for you. It's a Mobilitics GPI right at the top of the page. It does change depending on your role or champion selected on the left there. I actually dig the animations as the yellow shape adapts to the new champion selected. The profile page also has a role distribution for the lane you played in the last 20 games. Senpai has win rate, loss rate, average gold at the 10 minute mark, DPM diff, ugh, whatever the hell that is, and gold share for the main profile info, as well as the summaries you play with the most listed. Below that, it has plenty of match history, and that leads you right back to the post game I just described. Now, can anyone in the comments please explain to me what a Senpai score is, and as to why it's represented by a circle full of water? I am so confused, and I want answers. Okay, truth is, I know the answer. I'm the guy reviewing the app. Do you really think I would miss something that fundamental in a video that is most likely full of plenty of inaccuracies? The issue I have with the Senpai score is that there is no elaboration on anything. What does a 65 mean? Is it good? Is it bad? I have no idea. Is it a D grade? I doubt it. I went 10, 3, and 7. There is no explanation of what it means, so it's really ambiguous, and I do not know what to think about it. That is really all I have for the profile page. Let's see what else Senpai has to offer. Senpai has a champions list that when you hover over the champion, you see the number of matches, pick rate, and game win rate. The detail of this champion page is impressive. This has the playstyle, the damage type, the power spike, and I haven't even scrolled down yet. Hot damn, the options for information on a champion is major. You can see the win rate, the pick rate, the ban rate for each lane per region per rune choice. I am slightly aroused checking out all the options here. Beneath that, it has runes, core items, skill order, and game win rate. An ad literally just popped up on the page covering up what I was talking about. I just lost my semi. As I was saying, there is a graphical display for the game win rate, and you can tab between pick rate and ban rate. It is measured depending on the patch. I am impressed. Full disclosure, I wanted to basically wipe my ass with this app and trash it to the moon, but I am getting more and more impressed by the app the more I use it. At the bottom of the page, you can see visuals of the champion's abilities, including the passive. This is really nice to see. I like this because I don't have to go balls deep into the league interface to see this, as well as being able to refresh before the game starts on my second monitor. The last two things on the bottom of the champion's page is the basic combos and quick tips tab. I already commented on this, so I'm just going to mention it that it exists here too. Quick tips is kind of barren for NASA's but it kind of has all the basics information you need for them. These tabs would be hella easy to learn a new champion for sure. If you are new to the game and new to using third-party apps, this tab is your bread and butter. There is a counters tab that has solid information about lane win rates per champion, but what really makes me feel like a pro player is this matchup compare thing on the right side of the Senpai app. It's got it going on. You can check out a lot of good information that I'm not going to read off because even I don't like my own voice enough. Seriously, no one is ever going to ask me to create an audiobook. If I need to get a voice mod, let me know. Champions also have pro build tabs so you can see what real League of Legends pros used and in what matchups. You can also see runes and skill orders, as well as some other interesting information about that game. Time for the tier list. This interface is low-key sexy. You can check out the tier by role or by the tiers. Low-key love the changes and animations to move between the two when you switch them. The tier list is based on some undisclosed algorithm. It's not just win rate, because it says Alawi is B tier, but has better win rate than Trindamir. You can also highlight the champions by difficulty to play. So basically, if you want to learn an easy high tier champion, it is giving you the keys to the kingdom. This is the way Mando would be proud. Below that, you can basically search for a tier by any champion, any role, class, or region. 
pretty awesome that you can see all of this information just like that. Really cool interface, really accessible information if you're into that. Do you want to know what sets Senpai apart from the other third party apps? Senpai has timed challenges that last like two weeks. Now, at the time I'm writing this, there's a limited amount of time left on this challenge and I'm not going to participate. I cannot stress enough though, that under 250 users were participating on this challenge. So it seems like the odds of winning are pretty fucking high considering the player base of League of Legends. Unfortunately, you have to shell out four bucks a month to participate in this and get the premium version. So doing this could be a bit of a financial burden because we all know that you are a Netflix parasite and don't pay for any subscription services that don't rhyme with uh, pony stands. Don't worry, your secret is safe with me, but trust me, we all know. The last thing that Senpai has is a duos tab with Discord links as well as a place to add usernames for League so you never have to play alone again. Think of this as like Grinder for a duos partner, minus the super aggressive anal. Provided you're smart enough to keep your personal information to yourself on the internet, I cannot stress that enough. Do not give out any personal information to anyone on the internet. You see someone's gaming profile, you see a decent amount of information before you decide you want to game with some random stranger on the internet who, let's be honest, may or may not be wearing pants. So that is the breakdown of what Senpai has to offer. I think that Senpai is very underrated in comparison to the big gun apps like Core Professor Blitz and Mobilix. More on that in another video. Senpai is pretty impressive as its interface was clearly made with some care. I think that the developers really put a lot of effort into this app and this app really deserves a lot more credit than it's been getting. I'm a huge fan, I wish that its in-game overlays were a little bit better, however I'm really not going to be nitpicky considering how amazing the app is as a whole. I'm really impressed with this app and I hope someone who watches this video tries it out because of me, but I think that that is enough for today's video, I will see you on the next one.